Hey guys, hope you're all doing well back home and staying safe. Today, I have another dose of quarantine content for you with your host, that guy Danny. Like many of you, I felt pretty bored today when I woke up. So I thought to myself, let me do something productive. Let me start a new series called Workflow, where I'm gonna be making videos all about the behind the scenes, tips and tutorials of everything that goes into making YouTube videos. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, make sure to subscribe, like, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the future videos pertaining to workflow in the future. I'm gonna kick this series off with today's video where I'm gonna be showing you step by step how I go about making my own YouTube thumbnails. Now a YouTube thumbnail is basically just an image or a graphic that is associated with a video and it's one of the first things that you see whenever you're scrolling down the YouTube web page right website you see little images right the main aim of that is to try to capture the person's attention and also try to kind of explain what the video is about that's what i'm going to show you how to make in this video i don't know if what i'm going to show you is going to be considered good or bad but it's going to be a good foundation for advancing in the future now there are three things you're going to need to make a youtube thumbnail first you're going to need something to make it on whether that be a computer, a laptop, a tablet, or a phone. Second, you're gonna need some software, some photo manipulating and editing software, such as Photoshop, right? Which is probably the most well-known one. And thirdly, you're gonna need your assets, like your pictures, your little graphics that you're gonna be using and putting together to make a thumbnail. Now, I'm gonna be using my iPad, and I'm gonna be using an app called Affinity Photo. It's one of the closest apps that you can get to Photoshop and it has almost all the same features. It's not a free app, it's a paid app, I think like $20, but I feel like it's really worth it because you only have to pay one time. You don't have to subscribe to a subscription model like what Adobe does with its Photoshop. I'm gonna take my trusty Apple Pencil over here and let's begin. First thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna open the Affinity Photo app on my iPad. So I have it in my creatives folder, Affinity Photo. We wait for that to load and now what you're going to see is a gallery view of all of the work that you've done on the thing, right? I'm going to show you over here all the things that I made using it, Affinity Photo so you can have an idea of how powerful the software really is. I'm going to tap on the top right um, plus icon to start a new document. I'm going to tap this thing to start a new document. You can also get it your images straight from your photos, from the cloud. But I'm gonna start fresh. I'm gonna tap the new document icon. I'm gonna change the document from photo to web, right? I'm gonna change the resolution to 4K. The thing is, I believe the YouTube thumbnails, the, max, the, the maximum size should be 2560 by 1440, but I'm a baller, so I'm gonna use 4K. Make sure your orientation is set to horizontal, like this and press OK. Here you are presented with your workspace. Right? This isn't going to be a real in-depth tutorial of how to use a fake photo, but if you're interested in that, let me know down in the comments so that I can make it for you guys. Okay. Alright, so what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be recreating one of the thumbnails that I've already made in one of my previous videos. So, I'm going to bring up the Files app on the iPad where I have my assets. I have three images. A background image, an image of myself, and also an image of, of a virus. So what I'm going to do is, I, what I usually do, is I'm just going to tap and drag, oops, tap and drag the image of the background that I want and put it in. I'm going to hide the files app. I'm going to just resize it to how I like it, like so. Right. Then I'm going to bring in the image of myself, like so, and basically just rotate it to the right orientation with the little handle over here. And if you want to rotate it in a more efficient way, you can just tap with one finger on an empty space and just you can rotate it in 15 degree increments. So I'm going to do that. Size it a bit. Alright. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out the background of this image. So 
for clarity's sake, I'm just going to hide the background image by going into the layers panel and unchecking the thing. Alright, we're now we're in the photo persona, which is like how Affinity calls its workspaces. So I'm going to go into the selections workspace, click on smart selection brush tool, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Right, make sure your mode is on add. Right, your width. I'm gonna width of the pen. I'm gonna make it a little bigger so I don't have to write as much. Right, give a general outline of what you want to select. Right, so you can see as a rough draft, it's pretty good. You can see I made a little mistake over here, which I can change the mode to subtract, reduce the width size. And then I can subtract the parts I don't want. Switch back to add. Right here, I need to subtract. So I need to add. Right here, I need to add. And yeah, it seems perfect. After you've done your selection, go to this last icon here at the left side toolbar. It's going to be your refine selection tool. You can use this to see what you've selected, right? So everything in red is what you did not select, and everything that's in color is what you have selected. Another use of this tool is to fix selection around like areas that are hard to do, hard to select manually, so like hair. So in this mode, all you have to do is just with your finger or your pen, draw over the area that you want. Um, affinity photo to fix so as you can see it did, did a really good job we're gonna press apply and we're gonna go back into the layers panel and tap this plus icon and tap mask layer by doing that we'll keep everything that we selected and we'll lose the background like so now I'm gonna bring back the background layer the first image that we put that we hid by checking it again I'm gonna deselect from the thingy and now going back to your move tool tapping on my image here I can now resize it to whatever I want as you can see the thumbnail is going pretty good now now next thing I want to do is I want to go into the files app again and drag my virus image and I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna basically remove the background we're gonna go into the selection persona smart selection tool smart selection brush tool I'm gonna do the same thing we're gonna basically try to do it the best we can I'm not gonna do it so perfect right for the first of this video, it won't, doesn't have to be too perfect. Just the idea that counts. I'm gonna subtract that, add that back in, refine selection tool to see what I've selected. It looks pretty okay now. I'm gonna press apply. Go back to your layers panel and make sure your virus is selected. I'm gonna go into mask layer and remove the background. So now if you've removed your background you can tap the move tool again and you can now tap that thing and move it all around. Next thing I would do is I would add some text so I would go into your artistic text tool here and then just drag over the screen and type something like virus for example. For example Right, make sure you go back to your move tool so that you can move it all around like so. I'm gonna be changing the font because I don't really like this font so I'm gonna go over on the right tap the text settings and change it to a font that I like. Like that. I can even change the color. I'll change it to red. And yeah, you have something that looks like a good thumbnail. Now to finish things off, I'm going to be doing two things. I'm going to be doing two effects on the image to make it a little bit more pleasing. So I'm going to start with the background. Right? Selecting the background, I'm going to go to the filters area, this icon here. 
I'm gonna go scroll down until I see something called box blur. So it's gonna apply basically a blur to whatever image that you choose. You can change the blur intensity by going up and down this radius circle. I'm gonna keep it at like 70. Yeah. When you're done, you press apply. Second thing I wanna do is I'm just going to select the picture of myself. Right? I'm going to add an adjustment. Right? I want to make myself a little bit more brighter, a little bit more poppy. So I'm going to click brightness and contrast. I'm going to slide this brightness a little bit up and the contrast as well. Right? And as you can see, an adjustment layer creates a new layer in your layers panel, which affects everything below it. So you know, I only want it to affect the image of myself. I'm gonna tap and drag it right over until you see this line hovering over it. I'm gonna let it go. It's just gonna affect my me. Right? I'm gonna add another one. I'm gonna in the background layer, I'm gonna be adding another filter. Wait, not no not not filter, uh adjustment layer. Let's go all the way down until I see vibrance. Cause I want the background to be a little bit more vibrant. To slide that vibrance up and as you can see a big difference 100% vibrance versus negative 100 so 100% vibrance and that's it to export you just go into the document settings here press export and then you have all these things to work with but I'll just leave it as is I press share and I can save the image right to my gallery or if I don't want to do that I can share it over any other app like email, you know, another editing app. I can also save it to my gallery. And that's basically it. So that's the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something from it. If you like it, like it. If you know someone who might find this video helpful, share that video to them and make sure to subscribe for more videos just like this one.